Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is John Fontaine, and welcome back to another episode of the Fiqh of Love. Today we're joined here again with Sheikh Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for having me. No, jazakallah khair. Sheikh, subhanAllah, last, last uh, episode, mashallah, we learned so much about some of the reasons why, you know, why Muslims, both male and female, why do we get married? I wanted to discuss this a bit further. What are some of the, well, you know, how can, let's say, marriage be an act of worship? If you intend so, mm. it becomes an act of worship. And this is a major difference that uh, 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 this differentiates Muslims and practicing Muslims mm. from non-Muslims and from non-practicing Muslims. Mm. Uh, take for instance, in the sound hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, وَإِنَّ فِي بُضْعِ أَحَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةً uh, You know, this is like a, a very polite word that, that the Prophet ﷺ have used to refer to the sexual relations. Mm -hmm. He said, whenever you have sexual relations with your spouse, you'll be rewarded. Mm -hmm. So the audience, the companions, they raised their eyebrows and they said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, how can one have sex and be rewarded? Mm. So look at the reasoning, how the Prophet ﷺ, uh, made it clear to them. He said, What well, if a person happened to have sexual relations in haram, like fornication, mm. outside marriage? Uh, wouldn't he deserve to be punished? They said, Of course. He said, Well, so he avoided what is haram mm. and he resorted to what is permissible and he fulfilled and she fulfilled both. They satisfied the sexual desire in a lawful way. Then they deserve to be rewarded for that. So, well, yes, ta'fif. At least their faith is to keep your, uh, to guard your chastity, is to do it only in halal. So, you have a lot of temptations around you, and you avoid that, mm -hmm. and you chose willingly to satisfy your physical needs in halal, that applies also to the woman, then the Almighty Allah will reward you for that. And this is how marriage and the, the very, very private relationship in marriage, which is sexual relations mm. and intimacy, can turn into, uh, to become an act of worship. Mm. SubhanAllah. And this then leads us on to the, the benefits of that, which is procreation, having children. Oh, of course, it, of having course. Having a family. You know, the yeah, of course, uh, you know, in, in one of the hadith particularly, because as you know that many people, uh, you know, due to cultural reasons, mm. they like to have boys mm. and not girls. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam admired and praised a person whom Allah would bless with girls mm. and he will educate them, bring them, take care of them until they grow up. In one hadith, he said that if Allah bless you with three girls and you take care of them, you feed them properly, educate them, you clothe them, you bring them in, in, in a good way, they will become your veil again as hellfire. You're not going to enter an nar because of those three girls. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, what about two? He said, and two. Mm -hmm. uh, and they said, have we said what about one? He would have said, and one. In general, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, one of the reasons that he will be proud of his Ummah on the Day of Judgment is uh, having a huge number of followers. A huge number of followers, it's not because of the magnitude of number, it's rather because of the magnitude of the believers. Mm. Uh, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu once said, you know, the main reason why I, I actually have this intimate relationship is too busy. Why, why I actually m make sure that I would have such relationship. Hoping that Allah will grant me uh, a child who would say La ilaha illallah. It was the oh. wish of Prophet Suleiman, peace be upon him, when he intended to have, uh, you know, he was married like to a hundred women. And he was hoping that he would have uh, a child from each one of them uh, who would be a believer and he would support him in, the, in, uh, you know, in fighting the non-believers and so on. 
So uh, the procreation and having a, a goodly offspring is of course one of the greatest uh, you know, goals of getting married. And as I said they before, they make dua for you, the children, they can you know, benefit you even when you're dead and gone as well. Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata a'yunin wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imam. And look at the order. Without having goodly spouses, there is no way you can have goodly offspring. Without having the right spouse who would give you comfort, serenity and tranquility, you're not going to have the children who would be like comfort for your eyes. Mm -hmm. So this is the right beginning. This is the right beginning. Also, I mean, uh, this uh, reminds me, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I heard there's a statement from, I think it was Omar al Khattab, where he said that, you know, one of the uh, duties, if you like, or the responsibilities of the father is to pick a good mother in the first place. Oh, yes. Subhanallah. Yes, yes, yes. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, story when somebody complained to him that my, my son is very undutiful to me. He doesn't obey me, he doesn't respect me. So Umar Khattab decided to investigate the case before he punishes that boy. So the boy said, uh, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, don't we have rights upon our parents too? Or is it only one way? Mm. Only the parents should have rights on their children. He said, no. Uh, the parents have rights upon their children, and the children have rights upon their parents. He said, educate us. What are the rights of the children upon their parents? He said to choose a good mother so for them. Number one, to give them good names once they're born and to teach them the deen, the Quran. Mm. He said, well, my father deprived me for all my rights. His mother was not the mother whom he would be proud of. And we spoke about that in the previous episodes. It's not only about the look. And that applies also to the girl whenever she accepts a marriage mm. proposal. It's not because of the look alone. This is mm. one of the factors which helps you to make the final decision. But there are other factors and even much more important uh, factors as well. So uh, marriage, if you're a Muslim and if you're practicing Muslim, you know how to turn it into an act of worship. Mm. In, in a lengthy hadith, mm. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiyallahu an, وَعْلَمْ يَا سَعْدْ أَنَّكَ لَنْ تُنْفِقَ نَفَقَةً تَبْتَغِي بِهَا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكَ بِهَا أَجْرًا And in, in, in brief, the Prophet Sallallahu said to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, you got to understand that any spending, any spending that you spend, as long as you seek the pleasure of Allah out of that, mm. you will be rewarded for it. حَتَّى اللُّقْمَةُ تَضَعُهَا فِي فِمْ to the extent that the, whatever you feed your wife and whatever you feed your kids with the food, the drink, the medications, uh, you know, uh, the clothing, whatever you spend on your family, you will be rewarded for because it's an act of charity. This is all a, a path to Jannah. Of course, mm. of course. And the reason behind uh, this prophetic statement is because Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas uh, was a very wealthy companion. When he fell ill and he assumed that he's going to die, so the Prophet وسلم, visited him. At that time, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas was like a multi-millionaire and he used to have only one daughter. So he uh, consulted the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Ya Rasulullah, you see what is happening to me? I may not make it. And I have a lot of money. And I only have one girl. What is she going to do with all this money? So he thought, let me benefit out of this money as well by sharing it with the uh, Ummah and give it in a charity and I will be rewarded for that. So he decided, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I will just give her one third and give the rest in a charity. Two thirds. Mm -hmm. The Prophet said, don't do that. Do not do that. He said, okay, I will make it uh, have. But before that, he intended to donate all his money. He said, don't do that. He said, two-thirds. He said, not that either. He said, half, and I would leave half for my daughter. He said, not that either. He said, okay, the other way around. 
I will just donate one third and I will keep two thirds for my wife. He said, okay, and still one third is a lot. Mm. Then he remarked mm. saying that don't you think that whatever uh, you feed your family with or leave for your family and for your wife, uh, this is wasted. No, this is an act of charity as well. Yes. So it is, yes, he said, uh, uh, Allah doesn't want you to donate all your money, then your family afterward will bag. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas did not die in this sickness. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, who had one daughter at the time, lived to have 30 plus kids. 30 plus? Yeah. SubhanAllah. MashaAllah. How many wives? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the catch yeah. in the hadith is a lot of uh, the catch in the story and the hadith is you have to understand that whenever you go to work whenever you work hard to earn your living to support your wife and you make certain that you're earning from halal mm -hmm. to provide for your family to put bread on the table to send them to decent schools to hire tutors to teach them the deen uh, or science or math or whatever as long as it is something beneficial you are being rewarded for all of that jazakallah khair shaykh subhanallah we're gonna just take a pause there subhanallah beautiful uh, reminders jazakallah khair so we're just gonna take a short break so please just bear with us and we'll be right back assalamu alaikum <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa Welcome back to the Fiqh of Love. Sheikh, subhanAllah, just before the break, we mentioned some more reasons why, as Muslims, we should get married. Some of the reasons we get married. Can you tell us some other reasons why, as Muslims, we should actually... We spoke about the physical uh, satisfaction. Mm. And um, I, I think it's also important to shed some light on the moral... Uh, satisfaction you know what happens when a person uh, ends up with a good life mate with a good spouse that is actually the greatest pleasure in this life yeah. in the hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ad dunya mata' wa khayru mata'iha az saliha the life of this world is enjoyment there are many kinds of enjoyments but the best of all the best at large is when Allah blesses you with a righteous wife. Mm. That is the best pleasure in this life. And the interpretation of that practically appears very obviously in the hadith, in the story of when the Prophet ﷺ was in the cave and uh, he received the first wahi. When Jibreel ﷺ hugged him tight and he was so scared. So he rushed to his house and he rushed to Khadija radiallahu anha and he kept on saying Zamiluni, Zamiluni, cover me up, envelop me, um, um, um. he was shivering, he was frightened. Um, but Khadija radiallahu anha assured him as follows. She says, Wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abada. Honey, don't you worry. By Allah, Allah, God will never put you down. God will never humiliate or disgrace you. Why? She says, you're, a, you're the kindest person on earth. You uphold the ties of your kinship. You help the poor. You help the needy. You assist those who are in need. Uh, you take care of your family. You honor your guests. You're super nice. So she mentioned his good qualities in order to assure him that God will not let you down. There must be something good about it that you're not aware of. I want to bring up to the attention of the viewers and we remind each other with the fact that all of us on daily basis we are confronted with many challenges in this life. Take for instance when sometimes the person who has a decent job, a very good income, all of a sudden he's laid off. And now he has payments on his car, on his kids' tuitions and uh, on the house 
and he he's laid off mm -hmm. so you know what happens to many people in this condition they take their lives i was watching on the cnn after the uh, the financial crisis i believe uh, almost 10 years ago in the states that there was a rise in the rate of uh, the suicide among millionaires 25 percent some cases the person killed himself and killed his family took his life and the life of his family why because he cannot share with his wife who are who is the closest person to him remember the ayah they are your garments and you are their garments. Yeah. But he, he doesn't have the guts to tell his wife that he's laid off. And they're not going to be rich anymore. You know, this reminds me, they, they say the loyalty uh, of the woman is when the man is poor. And the loyalty, the, loyalty, uh, the test of the, you know, the proof of the loyalty of the man, it, it, the test of that comes when he's rich. Mm. You know, because you kind of see, you know, how, how the spouses react. It actually cases, goes yeah. both ways, especially mm. in Western societies, because both work, mm. okay, and both earn. What I'm talking about is when the spouse is ready to morally support mm. and help mm. the other party and, and give them uh, the self-esteem mm. and assure them, you'll be okay, don't worry about it. Versus when the person is worried most about the reaction of his or her spouse. Mm. So the moral support and the moral satisfaction in marriage in Islam, mm. when the person is married to the righteous spouse. Mm. The Prophet وسلم, says in the hadith, uh, mm. the best companionship is a companionship between the husband and his wife. Mm the wife and her husband. And that's why in the Quran it says, وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي A sahiba, hmm. a companion. And here it refers to the wife. Hmm. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, it's a sound hadith, May Allah have mercy on a man, رحم الله امرأن May Allah have mercy on a man who gets up to pray at night. So this is voluntary. It's not prayer, it's not mandatory. And instead of praying by himself, as many people do, he decides to wake up his wife so, so she would join him in the night prayer. But she's still sleepy. So the Prophet Sallallahu says, and he wets his fingers with water and he splashes some water over her face in order to wake her up. Honey, wake up. We're going to pray two rakahs together. Uh, we're going to read uh, a few pages of the Quran together at night, yeah, because Qiyamul Layl is the honor of the believer, you know. And may Allah have mercy on a woman who wakes up to pray at night. And in, in our today's world, most of those who pray at night are the women. Mm. And men are asleep. I don't want to say snoring, but they're working hard and mm -hmm. they say, Alhamdulillah, at least somebody at home is praying. So the Prophet وسلم, says, may Allah have mercy on a woman who wakes up at night to pray. And then she wakes up her husband to pray with her. He's going to be the imam, not the other way around. <laughs> but if he's too sleepy, she does the same. She wets yeah. her fingers with some water and splashes water over his face in order to wake him up, not to scare him off. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِن صَلَّيَا كُتِبَ جَمِيعًا مِّنَ الذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ والذاكرات. If it happens and they got up to pray, mm -hmm. even if it happened once, then they will be recorded before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among those who remember Allah much as they kareen Allah kathiran wa dhakrat whether of men or of women their word is forgiveness for their sins their word is to admit them into gardens of heavens beneath which uh, rivers are flowing Allah is pleased with them where can you find this? Hmm. only when you have the right spouse who would assist you and will be on the same page and would be very happy to assist you in this regard. A spouse, when you decide to give in a charity, when you decide to give in a charity, she would help you out. She would actually encourage you, not the one who says, we're more worthy. Don't give your mom. 
then don't give your brothers, don't give your sisters, your nephews and nieces. We need this money, even though they're very well off. Mm -hmm. Maybe his family are poor. In the hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ quoted the ayah, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَوْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَاعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَفًا كَثِيرًا The ayah says, who is willing to give to Allah a goodly loan and Allah will multiply the reward for him many, many folds. Mm -hmm. So Abu Dahdah is a companion who owned a garden with like 600 uh, date palm trees uh, producing and bearing a lot of dates. And so he says, Ya Rasulullah, the Almighty Allah is asking us for a goodly loan and he promises that if you give the goodly loan, he will take you to heaven and will give you a garden or a paradise in Al Jannah, etc. He said, yes. He said, O Prophet of Allah, bear witness that my entire garden is for Allah's sake, it is to be given. Put it wherever you are, give it to whomever you are, to the poor and to the needy. So the Prophet ﷺ accepted that from him and he went home and uh, now he's not worried what is he going to say to his wife because he knows, he's certain that his wife is on the same page. He says, Ya Umm Dahdah, come out, we're moving out. Why? Because their house was in the garden. Mm. We're moving out because I donated the whole garden for Allah's sake. Umm mm. Dahdah says, Congratulations, successful indeed is your trade. Imagine, imagine <laughs> if she is a woman who's after dunya, she would say, You're crazy. Yeah. You're out of your mind. I'm not coming out of this garden. This is my house. Yeah. You go out. You know how many how many women when their husbands decide after they travel to the States or to the UK and they decide this is the right age to take my kids back to a Muslim country to teach them the Quran to teach them the deen a woman to wear hijab and not to be chased by uh, you know Islamophobes uh, I want my children to l to learn how to go to the masjid and pray I want my kids to learn Arabi and Quran and 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 then the wife says I'm not going anywhere even though he's an American and she's coming from this culture mm -hmm. she's coming from Egypt She's so coming from Pakistan. She's coming from uh, Syria. And she says, this is home. You go. I'm yeah. not moving an inch. You know, this is, this is sad. And I actually know a lot of situations like this where families, you know, instead of living in a Muslim country where they have the opportunity no. to. But uh, as a matter of fact, that was the result of making, of not making the right choice from the beginning. Mm. Because you have to be very yeah. clear. Yeah. The reason... I'm marrying you and I chose mm. you. The guy says to the woman and the woman says to the guy is to help me to enter mm. Al-Jannah. We have just learned... Before, just before we finish mm. for this particular... That means we're finished. No, just before we okay. finish. I just want to recap some of the, some of the reasons you know, for getting, getting married, why we get married. So we, we said it's an act of worship. You know, companionship. It can be an act it of can worship be an act if of you worship, intend yes. to do so. Of course, you need the yes, the intention. You know, procreation and make the right the choice. Family, making the right choice. Mm. Subhanallah, beautiful. Subhanallah. So, inshallah, throughout the next uh, few episodes, inshallah, we'll go into a lot more detail yes, uh, regarding this. Inshallah, it's called so, fiqh of love. The fiqh of love. <laughs> so that's all we have time for for this particular episode. So um, for those of you at home, I hope you're enjoying it so far. SubhanAllah, you know, we've, we've had a great, uh, you know, uh, opportunity to spend some time with you. And we'd like to thank you again. Alhamdulillah, thank you for, so much. For uh, joining us. Weather is very pleasant. It's beautiful. Company is beautiful. Maybe inshallah we'll get a chance to take a dip at some point. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Join us next time for another episode of the fiqh of love, I should say. Correct. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.